Hello, I'm Rob with the B, and this is 101 Ways to Make Fire. Today we're talking again about the African hand drill, which is the classical friction fire. And we just need to talk a little bit about friction, because we can. Now the interesting thing about friction is everything. Most of the research done into friction, it's all about reducing friction. And there's an entire field of study devoted to this. And a whole bunch of very well-paid people called tribologists, whose job it is to reduce it. And so we get industrial lubricants and automotive lubricants and personal lubricants. But to do this, the world would be a very strange place without friction. Imagine a dog trying to run around a corner on a tiled floor. Or well, that nightmare where the witch is chasing you and you're running away but you're just staying in the same spot. Of course, without friction, the, the witch wouldn't be able to go anywhere either and it would just be standing there doing this creepy moonwalk like some spastic Michael Jackson. Come back here, little boy! Scary. Nails wouldn't work for holding planks together and frankly, you'd have quite a struggle trying to knock them in. Oh. So yeah, friction can be our friend, and it's useful to have an understanding of the concept. In, in classical physics, friction is a function of only two things. The coefficient of friction of the two materials and pressure. Now, the African hand drill is all about maximizing pressure, and I'm going to show you later how we do that. But let's have a look at that coefficient of friction. But wait, what's that I hear you say? What about speed? If you go and look in your physics textbook, will tell you that friction is actually independent of speed and of the surface area of contact. And we're talking about sliding friction between two solid objects. It will also tell you that the coefficient of friction for two particular materials is a constant. Now in real life it gets a little bit more complicated. Actually it gets a lot more complicated. Before we go any further I must point out that what I'm about to explain is basically just my theory of the entire process. I did try to research this, but I didn't seem to be able to find anything on the internet that deals explicitly with the phenomena involved with making a friction fire. Which is pretty strange, because the internet has all sorts of sites that deal very explicitly with almost anything you can imagine. To start off with, let's indulge in that uh, age-old masculine instinct of breaking something to see how it works. So we're going to take this perfectly good handle spindle and snap it in half. Oh, okay. Third quarter. Hey, don't waste wood. It doesn't grow on trees. Ha <laughs> ha. It's the voices again, Doctor. Wood is composed mostly of cellulose fibers. Think cotton wool. And generally they run in lengthwise like this. Now these fibers have great tensile strength, but on their own, they're a little floppy. So binding all those fibers together is something called lignin. It's like a glue. So really, wood is the original Stone Age, Space Age carbon composite. It's basically this matrix of long, strong fibers with the cement holding it all together. And this makes it remarkably strong and surprisingly light. But the lignin is heat sensitive, like a thermosetting glue. What you'd find in one of these glue guns. So the lignin becomes softer at higher temperatures and the basic structural composition of the wood starts to change as we heat it up. And eventually we land up with a sticky stick. And that's a good thing. It actually helps us. It also means that the coefficient of friction of the two materials is changing constantly throughout the process. And it would be useful to understand how those changes happen as the temperature increases. But let's start at the beginning. Let's try and take a closer look at this. Okay, that's not going to work so well. We're going to enlist the help of this and make a compound lens and then use the zoom function. Oh, wait. They don't want to see that, Rob. So you can actually see the little fibers sticking out the end over there. The first thing that happens is those sharp points just are abraded off. It's, they sandpapered away. And this happens before any significant heat is generated. The next thing that happens as the wood starts to heat up is that the lignin starts to melt, the wood becomes plastic, it deforms and it's basically squashed into shape. 
So at first the friction is actually reduced because the two surfaces become smoother, polished if you like. And this becomes obvious when you're actually doing the drilling. It suddenly becomes easier and you need to apply more pressure to maintain the same output of heat. But then something weird happens.